In this video, we're going to go through what was announced at WWDC 2022, and we're going to do it in a turbo way. So if you want to know everything, strap on in. The first thing that was talked about here is iOS, iOS 16. Now, we've got some new lock screens. That's going to be kind of cool. Android users have had this for a long time. It gives you the ability to have some extra widgets on your lock screen of your iPhone. I think that'll be pretty handy for a lot of folks. Notifications are moving from that weird thing at the top to a stacked view at the bottom. We've got some new live activities. So for your music, your sport, your workouts, you can actually get all of that just popping up there. And it'll be live instead of, you know, a notification every five minutes. It's just going to update live. We've also got um, a focus update. So this now carries over into apps so apps can have a focus mode and it just means that you can set different apps and <laughs> I like that the example they gave was you can set your safari so that during work hours you're only looking at your work tabs that you can now edit your messages so if you send a message and instead of saying Gabe you say babe that was their example you can go back in and edit that you can also undo your sends so if you send something and you didn't mean to send it you can undo it and again going to be a bit time limited there so uh, if you if you drunkenly text your ex the night before and you wake up in the morning full of regret probably going to be too late she cried we also have the markers unread which is going to be handy for a lot of folks uh, especially me I, I saw you read my message and why didn't you get back to me immediately well because priorities this one I'm pretty excited about new dictation features so there's a hybrid of speech and typing that you can use so that means that if you're using ios and you're typing on there you can use the dictation feature and then quickly flick between the keyboard and dictation live text in videos through the cam and through the camera so this is kind of cool you might know that live text is available in ios and now, if you're watching a video, you can pause the video and extract live text from that. And visual lookup. So this is similar to your Google image search, where you can search instead of via text, you can search based on the image. Uh, now, the wallet's got a bunch of updates here. You can now store your IDs in a lot of different states. You can now store a bunch of keys uh, for various different things. You can start your BMW and you get in-app ID verification. So if you need to uh, verify your ID to an app, you can just say, hey, yeah, look, I'm I'm 21. I thought the use case for this one would be great for buskers who would be able to actually use this, but it's only at the moment available for some vendors and in the US. But iPhone to iPhone, tap and pay with Apple Pay. Can you imagine being out and being a busker and you just whip out your iPhone and you're like, yeah, pay later. It's after pay. Apple are doing it again two years after everyone else is doing it. So if you want to pay things off in four equal payments instead of all at once with your Apple gear, you have an option now. You can also track your orders through your wallet. So if you use Apple Pay to buy something, you can get order updates and tracking in there. There's new maps available and they talked about uh, new maps uh, across Australia, Canada, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, all those, all those countries. And uh, they're coming to these countries. So I can see Glenn Clark here in the chat, these countries uh, in the coming months. Now I use Google Maps, so I'm not a big Apple Maps user anyway, but maybe this will encourage me to go check out Apple Maps again. We'll race through family sharing. This is going to be good for folks like me who have children. They need to manage their kids' accounts. They need to set up parental controls. It's now going to be a heck of a lot easier. An iCloud shared family photo library, which could be super handy slash quite embarrassing if the wrong things are shared, just quietly, particularly for those in like domestic violence situations. There's going to be an option in iOS 16 to basically uh, wipe the slate clean. So if you're sharing things like your location, like your passwords with someone and uh, you're in an abusive relationship or something happens, you can immediately revoke that, which I think is a good thing and shows that Apple's pretty committed to that. They then went into the home and uh, you can watch it. If, you, if you're an Apple home user, go watch the keynote. There's some interesting things there. So for those like me who have CarPlay that looks like that, now CarPlay is actually going to expand. Some cars are going to be built with virtual dashboards where the Apple CarPlay can show different information on your dashboard. There's all the iOS features. There's a lot going on there. This is just an additional one. I thought this was funny. Personalized spatial audio. So if you use AirPods, you may be aware that they use spatial audio, which basically means, you know, when you move your head around, your head, it moves in the space with the screen. They're now going to have that personalized. You can take a photo of your head. So if you've got a weird shaped melon, not pointing any fingers, then you can actually take a photo and it can set that up for the distance of your ears and your facial features. Watch OS version 9 is coming. It's a thing. Um, fitness. 
is being updated for fit people. And uh, our, our Aussie bloke there, uh, who was very, uh, very fit looking, was telling us all about that. So again, if you're into that, not that it's not important, not that it doesn't matter, but this is the turbo. This is the addition for folks who don't want to watch the two hours. So you just so you know what was there, there's some updates to watchOS and fitness that are going to enhance that for some folks. We've absolutely buried the lead because the big news was uh, what we expected, that we've got the M2 chip. So if you've been following along at home, if you watch my update from uh, over a year ago, the M1 chip kind of changed things. That's where the first Mac Minis and MacBook Airs and uh, MacBook Pro 13 inches were released. And now we have the M2 chip. So this is your Ma the, the new MacBook Air and the new MacBook Pro 13 inch. Uh, have this M2 chip. It's similar, but faster. And uh, if you're confused about this, if you're like, is the M2 better than the M1 Pro and Max and Ultra? No, it's not. So the way it works is that the M M1 was the original chip, and then that was enhanced and built upon with the Pro, the Max, and the Ultra. This is the M2. So it's better than the M1, but it's not necessarily better than any of those Pro, Max, and Ultras. So if you're, if you're confused about that and you're like, why would I ever buy a, an M1 Ultra or an M1 Max now? It's still going to be a lot more powerful than this base level M2 chip, just to clarify. What do we get? Well, we get a MacBook Air. A MacBook Air, which is uh, the M2 13.6 inch. Everything is pretty similar here in terms of the original one. There's a couple of changes here. We have a new camera that finally moved to a 1080p high definition camera rather than the potato that was in the old versions. So that's good news for those using uh, FaceTime and the camera there. Still got that same magic keyboard. This uh, We've got MagSafe on there, which is pretty cool. And uh, we've also got a maximum of 24 gigabytes of RAM. So one of the big criticisms of the 2020 M1s was that they had a maximum of 16 gig. Apple have added an extra 8 gig gigabytes of delicious RAM to that. There's the MacBook Pro, very similar sorts of features. The touch bar is back. <laughs> So that's one of the main differences, really, between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. They use the same chip, same cores, same uh, specifications, basically. They've got slightly better microphones and speakers, and they uh, have the magic keyboard and touch bar. So Apple must have had a bunch of chassis with touch bar laying around, so they decided to uh, keep them and throw that in there for them. There's your prices. MacBook Air starting from $1199. To give you the comparison, the M1 MacBook Air is $999. So it is a $200 premium that you're paying from what we paid two years ago, which is understandable with all the supply issues and all the inflation issues and everything else. And the MacBook Pro is sitting pretty at $12.99 as well there. Mac OS is now going to be called Ventura. Alrighty then which apparently is another place in California that I know little about. Stage Manager. This is coming to both Mac OS and iPad OS, sort of. Hold that thought. I'll tell you about it in a moment. But the Stage Manager is this one here. So this is the ability to have your little icons down the side there and then have your one main thing in the middle there. So it gives you some a different way to view your screen. And I kind of like it. It's more reminiscent of Windows than it is of Mac. And a lot of this stuff is kind of borrowing from things like Windows and Chrome OS, to be, to be very honest. Uh, we also have new changes. The Spotlight has updates like Live, Text, and Photo Search. Mail, if you use Apple Mail, it's updating. There's a bunch of stuff that's going to enhance your search and your mail experience if you use Apple Mail. Uh, Safari is being updated. It's getting tab sharing if you want to collaborate on your tabs. If you're like me, you've got passwords everywhere and you can never remember your passwords. So what pass keys are is a way to use Face ID or Touch ID instead of a password with your devices and with your apps. It's synced across all of your Apple devices and it's similar to how it works now. Like you'd probably notice that if you don't know your password, it'll sometimes pop up and say you want to use it and then it verifies you and then it throws in the password. The benefit of this is there's no password at all. So there's no way that someone can manually enter it. It's uh, very much more difficult to be socially engineered or for anyone to hack in. And if you're wondering, well, what about if you're on another device? You can actually use like your iPhone and there's a QR code kind of thing, similar to what you use when you're setting up a new iPhone. You basically, looks like you can take a photo of that and then use the credit. And it means that instead of having to remember stuff, you're actually using something that you own. You're using your identity to, to uh, open things. What could possibly go wrong? Gaming, 
I didn't really look much about gaming. It looks like it's uh, good, but I don't play games on any of my Apple devices. So FaceTime can now hand off between your phone, your iPad and your Mac. So if you're out and about taking a call, you can come back and switch it over to your Mac. That could be handy in some situations. I don't use a lot of FaceTimes. You can now use your iPhone as a Face ID camera. The way this works is that they've teamed up with Belkin. There's these little clips that go on the top of your screen. You attach them to your iPhone and then you put it there. If you've ever thought, well, the webcams are not that good, and if only I could use the great camera that is on my iPhone to uh, do my FaceTime calls, my Zoom calls, my everything else, well, now you can. And it's called the Continuity Camera. Studio light, so there's some cool lighting options you can do now that basically enhances the brightness and bl blurs the background so you look kind of like I do here, like you're using studio lights. Desk view. So because the, the iPhone has a wide-angle lens, it can actually look down and then it must be doing some cool processing to actually make the desk look like it's actually flat. So it can show your face and your desk at the same time. That's pretty cool technology, if it works as advertised. What do you reckon? Collaboration in documents you can now do. So if you've ever tried to collaborate in documents, you'll know that if you send a document to someone, it just sends a copy. Now it'll actually send a link into the original document. Freeform is coming later this year, and this is the ability to do... Let's be honest, what you've been able to do in Zoom and Google Meet and every other platform for years, which is have a whiteboard, have an interactive whiteboard session while you're on a FaceTime call. Are we finally there? Desktop class apps, logic on the iPad, final cut on the iPad. No, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but no, or at least not quite. But what we're getting is some more desktop features. So there's some enhancements to the files app in there. Now, this was a bit unclear as to whether these are going to be across all iPads and iPadOS or just the M1s, but the other features that are being added to iPadOS 16 are definitely only for the M1 iPads. I think things like these file updates, which look cool, like actually being able to, you know, sortable columns in files and viewing folder sizes in files, maybe they'll even give us a progress bar with a time on it instead of just sitting there spinning, maybe. Uh, so yeah, so anything that's going to enhance files apps is going to be good. You're going to get customizable toolbars in some of the apps there. Display scaling, which means you can zoom in and out. You can now use all 16 gigabytes of RAM and do virtual memory swap, which means if you've got storage space, because SSD storage is not quite, but almost as fast as memory, you can use any storage space as additional memory for those real memory hungry applications. Stage Manager, as we mentioned before, is also coming to the iPad, but it appears to be just, again, iPads with M1. So this is probably the feature that will make me want to get an M1 iPad. You can now, and this for, for creators out there, this is the one. You can now use proper external display support. So for the longest time, all you've been able to do with your iPad is mirror your iPad. So for people like me, there's my iPad. I can mirror it into my Mac. I can use an HDMI cable. I can send exactly what's on my iPad to my screen. Now we're going to be able to do this if you have an M1 iPad. So that means that if you're running something like a GarageBand, you can have your notes and you can sing along and you can have your notes there and, and your, your GarageBand on the screen. If you're doing applications in things like Procreate, you could be able to have like one, one screen open with a bunch of notes or with conversations or your collaboration and your other screen can be dedicated to your creativity.